through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin. <laughs> Episode 169. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of Dancing Ice Monkey. Age and Continental Drift, <laughs> yeah. we're going to be talking about 20th Century Fox's animated branch. Mm -hmm. You know, the animated films that Fox has done over the years. Yeah. Particularly, you know, their more official releases mm -hmm. from Fox yeah. Animated Studios, yeah. Yeah. to be safe. I mean, let's note... Things uh, they weren't just, like, sliding under the rug and getting the money from. Yes. Before 1997, Fox did have some animated films. Hmm. It's the Wizards, oh. Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest, yeah. uh, The Page Master. You know, so there were a few... Oh, yeah, I remember that. There, there were a few of them, but they weren't really under the Fox Animated mm. Studios moniker. So mm -hmm. we're going to be talking anything after that. Um and essentially, that's from Anastasia, um, mm, Anastasia, that's right, yeah. whatever you want to pronounce it. Uh, we're not going to talk about that one because neither of us are particularly invested in that film. Yep. But the first one that we will be talking about is Titan Age, mm -hmm. which you have spoken about in the past. Big I fan of. Yes. Uh, please, please. Well, respond. I remember one of the things that I liked about this movie, specifically animation-wise, is this was one of the. Uh, in my opinion, successful blends of kind of the CGI background or large objects, mm -hmm. but then the two-dimensional, like, hand-drawn sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. characters moving within it. And since I was always a big fan of, you know, video games that were like that, I enjoyed seeing that visual aesthetic. I kind mm -hmm. of like the difference between the two. You know, I mean, I, I, I conceptually like the idea. I like the idea of, you know, what do you do after the world is, like, mm -hmm. destroyed? And, I mean, it's the same sort of thing as you think about something like 2012. Mm -hmm. And granted, 2012 is all the build-up to, yes. you know, get yes. out. But, like, I always wonder, you know, if they did a, a 2013 or a 2112 mm -hmm. yeah, or something yeah. like that. Now that they're on these ships, you mm -hmm. know, where do you go from there? I mean, mm -hmm. I guess 20, 2012, they don't actually leave the Earth. They're just living on but the yes, ships. Still. But nevertheless, it's sort of like, the world is going to shit. Mm -hmm. What do you do next? Titan AE is another like arc-like ship in that sense. Yes, it's but a, they actually have to leave because yeah. Earth blows up yes. in this case. By the dredge, which yes. are the coolest looking they're pretty weird cool, yeah. villains too because they're just pure energy. So it's like, what do you do to pure energy? You don't do much. And, you know, this should be noted that this and Anastasia were both, Anastasia, whatever, um, were both directly under the Fox Animation Studios, mm -hmm. you know, development and mm -hmm. uh, distribution. But because they were such flops, I mean, yeah. Anastasia was a flop. Yeah, and so a was Titan a, a modest, modest success. Mm -hmm. Titan A was a flat-out flop. I yeah. mean, cost $75 million, made like 22 Woo! Yeah, so not not hugely successful, but it was out of the twenty two million and like ten dollars when I bought it on VHS. Yeah. Did you buy it on VHS? I still own it on VHS. Uh, I mean, it was definitely ahead of the curve in a lot of ways. I mean, Matt Damon, mm -hmm. you know, shortly after his like Goodwill Hunting success, mm -hmm. you have a whole great cast: Bill Pullman, Drew Barrymore, Drew Barrymore Ron Perlman. Great, great group mm -hmm. of people, but you know, sadly, yeah, sadly, one of the films that led to the demise of. Fox animated um, studios. You know, sci-fi sci movies, if you don't market them as, like, horror thriller, mm. are very hard to market. Yeah. You have to either be humongous special effects, gigantic budget, or, like, a horror Also, also note that it's not, like, a child-oriented film, much no. like a lot of their later True. success was. Yes. It was much more, sort of, adult-oriented, mm -hmm. so that yeah. might have been one of the big problems with it. Yeah. Again, hard to market. You're like, yeah. oh, kids, kids yeah. cartoon, so you don't go as an adult, and kids go, and they're like, adult movie! <laughs> yeah, but after say, let's see, was it the year two thousand? Fox animated in terms of development mm -hmm. kind of ceased to exist, and it really became more about the distribution. And yeah. they partner with a lot of other companies, one of which they own, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's a different studio name, mm -hmm. much sort of like Pixar to Disney. Yes, but they've also worked with completely other groups to distribute their hmm. work, including one of your favorites, mm. Waking Life, yes. in two thousand and one. This is, was it the Rotoscope? Yep. Uh, Richard Linklater film mm -hmm. that was really sort of the precursor to... Uh, Scanner Darkly. Scanner Darkly, mm -hmm. yeah. And you, those awful commercials that... Yes. Charles Schwab. Yeah, that's right. This is also sort of the unofficial uh, other film in the... Was it the... Oh, yeah, before, the before yeah. Sunset series where yeah, they have Celine... Ethan Hawke and Julie Was it Celine Dupree. and Jesse appear mm -hmm. in it? Granted, it's not... A full-on yes, film of their yeah, own, yeah. but you know, it's it's a nod. Mm -hmm. It's a nod. Yeah, because each of the scenes are supposed to kind of be weird dream states the yes. characters going through. 
Which, why, why don't you sort of break it down? That's what... Yeah, it's, it's essentially a character who is dreaming about having conversations talking about dreams. Yes. And so as he's dreaming and learning and discussing thinking about dreams and reality, he kind of starts to realize he is dreaming and can't wake up. Mm -hmm. And proceeds to bounce around this kind of dream reality as the movie progresses. So, and, I mean, visually it's very cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, Richard Linklater is a very interesting filmmaker, mm -hmm. so this definitely falls into that same field. And I gotta say, it's particularly interesting because for an animated film, this also was nominated for a slew of Indie Spirit Awards. Mm. Best Feature, Best Director, Best Screenplay, which yeah. is kind of surprising. Uh, screenplay makes the most sense to me because the right... Yes. The, the philosophical discussions and conversations that happen in the movie are so interesting. But how often do you see like an indie spirit award for an animated film? It's, it's not. True. It's not a very common. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of neat that the animation definitely helps the dream state. Mm, it's very uh, yeah. idea because not only can they transition scenes really easy, but the fact that because of the way the animation is, even static things are still kind of moving. And I mean. And you just, so. There's more flexibility in terms of like really recreating dreams yeah. without seeming cheesy yeah, in a lot of yeah. stories. And it sh should also note, this same year, they also distributed another semi-animated film with Monkey Bone, which oh, is a huge God, huge that movie bump. was horrible. But we're not going to talk about that because it's part oh. live action, part animation. So. And it's so god-awful. What could we say other than don't watch it? I like Henry Selleck, so I can't, I can't, I, I don't want to hate on it too and much. And I was really a Chris Kattan and Brendan Fraser fan yeah, at the Chris, time. Chris Kattan was kind of a sketchy I'm saying dude. at the time when it came yeah. out, I was like, yeah, it's going to be great. I think I saw it in the theater. I might have as well, actually, yeah. now that you mention it. So. McGuffin says, learn from our mutual da, 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 da. mutual uh, mistakes, mistakes yeah. and don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but the real turning point in terms of Fox yeah. animation was the 2002 release of Ice Age. Yes. This is from Blue Sky Studios, which in essence is their Pixar. Gotcha. It's a group that isn't Fox in mm -hmm. name, but yeah. they essentially produce all their 3D animated productions. Got it. Interesting. And, you know, it's one of those things that's funny to think about, that they're sort of the third... Um, animated studio of mm -hmm. really significance. Obviously, a Pixar that's yeah. had a long history of success. And you've had DreamWorks that sort of had some success with mm -hmm. Shrek, no Snowdally. Yeah. But they're the third studio to have a, a tremendously successful animated mm -hmm. series that's gone on for several pictures. Yeah. Ice Age has been that. I mean, it made oh, a, yeah. they made a ton of money, and we can talk about this more as we get to mm -hmm. Ice Age kind of drift. But the first one alone made almost $400 million. And this is the story of, you know... The, it's, it's kind of shifted, actually, interestingly mm -hmm. enough, the subject as it's gone along. The first like the Ice Land Before Time movies. Yes. Yeah, some good dinosaurs there as well. But this one it was initially about uh, the first interactions with animals mm -hmm. and people, and they're oh, yeah, taking right. this infant child back to mm -hmm. the humans to I sort of save that it. that was the uh, plot element of the first yeah, one. Yeah, so, I mean, you've had that. You've moved to dinosaurs. You've had, you know, uh, the Earth's falling into an actual ice age. They've had a whole bunch of different things at play during the series, which I really respect. And this film is co-directed by Chris Wedge and Carlos Saldana. Okay. And Chris Wedge is a name that's had some moderate notoriety to it. The reason I mention him is because he was one of the founding members of Blue Sky Studios back oh. in, I believe, 1987. Yeah, wow. So okay. they, they've been around almost okay. over a decade huh. before this even occurred. Wow. Carlos Saldana... We'll talk about because he is hugely influential in terms of the success mm, mm -hmm. uh, as they go on. And both of them were also involved with uh, Robots in 2005, which we won't talk about as well. I completely forgot that movie existed but, until you said it right now, made Spencer. made $250 million. So that it, movie? With yeah. Robin Williams yep, made that yep, much money? Yep, yep. But nevertheless, I, I enjoyed Ice Age. You mm -hmm. know, I thought it was very cute yeah. and much more tolerable than uh, comparable other animations such as Madagascar. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, or, in my opinion, the Shreks. Yeah, no, totally. Oh. I agree. I think it's better than both of them. I've, I mean, it's very cute. It's got that uh, squirrel character. I think his name was Scratch. Yeah, who I really think became so. a popular um, cultural mm -hmm. icon. Yeah. And, but even just the regular characters, you know, I think Ray Romano, mm -hmm. Dennis Leary, and John Leguizamo have actually made a fairly nice little team, yeah. much more than sort of the uh, Madagascar crew mm -hmm. or the Shrek crew, as yeah. you said, you know. And it's, it's kind of a fun film, you know. It was nominated for Best Feature mm -hmm. in 2002. Um, 
couple things that we need to note about that. Okay, Number one, let's do it. Lost a Spirited Away, mm, which is cool. Understandable. Yeah. But also, this is one of the first times that Pixar did not have a film ah. eligible. It was between Monsters, Inc. the year before and okay. Finding Nemo the year after. Wow. So that's probably part of the reason. Good that, time to pop if yeah, you're going to pop. Totally, totally. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, a fun little film. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've actually thought the series has been fairly enjoyable as it's gone on, too. Pretty that's much the all, same. Sort of. All pretty hugely successful, yes. especially internationally. Bigger, bigger, yeah. Bigger and bigger. We'll talk about that as we go on, but, you know, uh, mm -hmm. not too shabby. One of the ones that's very much within the family mm -hmm. of uh, 20th Century Fox and Fox Anime Studios is The Simpsons Movie. Yeah. Which, which is, was, I think, 15 years coming at that point. Yeah, been about probably 12 and a half years too late, but still, yeah, well, I mean, it still made a bucket of money because it's The Simpsons, and it yeah, still three, was... 500 million? Yeah, it still was, you know, relatively entertaining and tolerable because it's The Simpsons, but it was also... Yeah. Kind of old and stale because it was The Simpsons. And I actually, you know, I think, I mean, I'd given up on The Simpsons a year. Oh yeah. This. And I think, I mean, I, I would argue that this is probably largely influenced by South Park uh, in terms uh -huh. of the success of the South Park movie. They're Definitely. like, okay, maybe we can make a yeah. movie because they had sort of had been discussed. They're like, for how years. are we going to do it and have yeah. it not be a failure? Well, so. also just how are they going to fit into their schedules mm -hmm. and stuff like that? For years they talked about, it, and finally they got around to doing it, and. I think it was better than a lot of Simpsons episodes because it went deeper than most of their episodes go. True. Most of the time, you know, they they put the episode in, and as soon as it's over, like, it's essentially like restart. Yeah, thing. exactly. Like, nothing yeah. really seems to have any long-lasting mm -hmm. impact. Whereas this one, they really were allowed to go deeper mm -hmm. with the characters, and I thought that was more interesting. And no, definitely. I mean, it was, don't get me wrong, it's, I mean, I enjoyed it, but it, it again, like you said, it was just, it was so late in relation mm -hmm. to it that it was just like, you know, even if this is great, who really cares anymore? I know there's still Simpsons fan out there. I mean, it's still on the air, so clearly there's some people. You know, still it's, watching it's, it, but... it's just like when Spider Pig is the highlight of your movie. Like, yeah. you're 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 kind of like middle of the road. Let's yeah. just leave it at that. Like, That's it's true. cute, but yeah. it's it's the joke is not that yeah. clever. Uh, and shouldn't... Bart running naked is something that you yeah. have to do because, you know, you have to compete with something that like That is true. Bart. They did have full frontal. Mm -hmm. mm. That is a good point. Very provocative. His wee little winky. <laughs> Couple things to note, though. A, didn't even get a best... Uh, Academy Award nomination Understood. for Best Animation. Right. Got nominated for Golden Globe, so that's something. But I want to note that the director, David Silverman, one of the co-directors of Monsters, Inc. So, well, not hi. a bad guy to uh, pick for your movie yeah. if you're going to do one. So. Yeah, seriously. One of the more underrated films to come mm -hmm. out of Fox Anime Studios is uh, Horton Hears a Who. Yes. The other... Dr. Seuss film mm -hmm. after Grinch Who Stole Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, Cat in the Hat. Oh, I wish we're both was the, was there's one bad. more. Is there one more? There's another one. I think that's it. Oh, there's one that, this year. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. There's the um, uh, Lorax. Good call. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, this is the other, mm -hmm. other uh, Dr. Seuss movie. And, uh, you know, I might argue that this might be the best one I think honestly th I, I think they really like made an amazing decision to go full animated and not mm -hmm. try to do the live action thing anymore there's just no reason for it do do the dr seuss world is so surreal that it's, it's so just, visually you're, yeah you're just asking for so many problems I mean, if you don't have a huge budget i will say that they actually did a fairly good job of recreating Dr. Seuss in live action for the films they did with Ken the Hat and Grinch. Mm. But yes. nevertheless, I really I feel like it is much more suited to animated style. Mm -hmm. And Horton Hears Who was beautiful mm -hmm. visually. Oh I yeah. Mean, and I, I just, like in terms of the Dr. Seuss movies, I mean maybe or Dr. Seuss books or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you have the Grinch and that's probably number one and it'll always be that way, at least for me. Mm. But Horton Hears a Who is a great story in it terms really of is. you know like um, belief in oneself, mm -hmm. um, sort of a connection beyond, you know, what you can see. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like looking outside the world at large, yeah, stuff it's like, like that. It's a, it's a grand story. And, you know, considering that it's both Jim Carrey and Steve Carell mm -hmm. in it, I was really skeptical that it might be over the top. And it yeah. really doesn't go over the top. They both thankfully. play relatively, you know, s real characters. Not They're not goofy, over-the-top characters. If anyone does go over the top, it's probably Will Arnett as mm -hmm. uh, Vlad. Was it the, um, the Bird of Prey? Mm, um, Vulture. Vulture, yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, if anyone, that's probably... And it's, I mean, it's... 
It's good. Uh, I think I put this on expecting to be bored and for it to just be on, and found myself actually rather entertained. entertaining. Yeah, yeah I mean, pulled I th- into it. I think I think it's a fun film. As I said, it's probably might be my favorite that Doctor Seuss that has done. It's this probably far. the most well-rounded Doctor Seuss that's mm-hmm. been out, where it's actually like rather than really good in some parts and really mm, in other areas. This is it's pretty well, you know, consistent. And uh, in terms of a tale of two uh, careers, mm, mm-hmm. the directors of this film are a guy named Jimmy Hayward and a guy named Steve Martino. Okay. After this, Jimmy Hayward went on to direct Jonah Hex. And Steve Martino, one of the co-directors of Ice Age Continental Drift. Probably going to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Arguably one of the worst comic films ever <laughs> yeah, made. Yeah. Uh, Which one would you rather be? Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Yep. Film made two, almost $300 million at the box office, though. Not so bad. if you have not given Horton Here's a Who a chance... You really should. You really should. Mm-hmm. We're saying it now. We are. The As other a group, we're saying it. <laughs> the other one that was sort of from a, a separate company that was co-distributed... or I still haven't co- seen. <laughs> but not co-distributed. It was distributed by Fox Anime mm. Studios. was... Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yes. This is the Wes Anderson film based mm-hmm. upon the novel, or novel, the short story by mm-hmm. Roald Dahl. Amazing. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, Wes Anderson mm-hmm. is one of those guys that I don't love because he does the same thing every time, but I don't begrudge because he's mm-hmm. so good at what he does. Yeah. This is yeah. the one real exception to the role for him. Mm-hmm. Fantastic uh, cast, you know, uh, George Clooney yeah. as Mr. Fox. Uh, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep as his wife. Mm-hmm. You have Jason Schwartzman as his sort of first Bill Murray. Song. Uh, this is Lawyer, the Badger. Mm-hmm. It's it's such a funny film. It really plays. Uh, I mean, I want to go back and reread the Raw Dahl novel because <laughs> I, I wonder if there's a co- subtext that I totally glossed uh. over before or if was added upon gotcha. that was already there. It's so funny, you know, they, like as I've said many, many times before, like the fact that they use curse. As a substitute mm-hmm. for actually cursing, mm-hmm. uh, the the, <laughs> the rivalry between Mr. Fox and these three different um, human characters mm-hmm. is just so funny. It's it's great. Cl- it's sort of, I don't know if it's actually claymate or just stylized yeah, to be it's, sort of claymate. At the very least, it's stop motion animation. Yes. And it's just it's so well done that I really enjoyed it. It was nominated for uh, Best a and Feature. Sadly, did not win. Lost Up. Hard mm. to criticize that as much as I love this film. Mm-hmm. Up is pretty friggin' spectacular as well. That's but, the thing. If you're an animation studio you got a, and you're not Pixar, you've got a battle already. Yes. <laughs> totally. Totally. But, you know, you think about it, you know... Uh, a fox going up against farmers is such a brilliant idea that it's hard to criticize. Mm-hmm. And I love Raul Dahl's work. Yeah. Uh, sadly, most of the time it's done less than desirably, mm. like Willy Wonka and the ch- or uh, Charlie, mm-hmm. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I'm talking the, yes. the Tim Burton one. The, yes, so the first John, one the is a little bit sketchy as well in terms of actually recreating mm-hmm. the vision of Raul. But Dahl. it's so interesting in its own right that you know how can right. I dislike it? But, but like never, James and the Giant Peach. Awesome. I like that, yeah. Awesome. I mean, I believe that's Henry Selleck as well, if we're throwing Henry Selleck a bone. We are. Uh, but, you know, nevertheless, it's, I, in terms of actual film, I think this is probably better hmm. than that one. I mean, i got to be honest. Like, I like James and Giant Peach, but Fantastic Mr. Fox is just a better film. Oh, well, I'm, James I'm and not Giant comparing Peach the two. I'm just saying it's like I am Roald comparing Dahl stories. the two. I am comparing the I was the, only comparing Roald Dahl stories. I am comparing the two. Boom! Get on board. He's got a very strong opinion about this, as you can tell. Please tell me why he's wrong at Greg at (laughs) MacGuffinPodcast.com. You're either, you know, get on board or get out! Is that your catchphrase? Get on board or get out? Yeah, it will be now. Yeah, you're going Mm -hmm. in the crapper, was it? Put it in the crapper. Shove that in the crapper. Put it in the crapper, something like that, yeah. (laughs) One of the uh, most successful uh, films from Fox Anime Studios, though, is one of the most surprising ones, mm-hmm. the ones that I really wasn't even familiar with until I watched, and that was Rio. Yeah. From, uh, was it director, single director on this one, most mm-hmm. of them have co-directors, but this one single, Carlos Sedana. I thought so. A film that made almost $500 million worldwide, which... <laughs> Oh, so so shocking that it caused you to sneeze. I know five hundred million dollars. I I can't believe it. No, I, I really didn't. I mean, I I remember seeing it come out. Didn't really think much about it until I looked at like the year end gross and mm. saw this was like five hundred million dollars. I was like, oh my god. Okay, I will check this out. I feel like both this and Rango 
yes, came out. They did in about like March, April yeah, last and year. It was just like, oh, cool, two animated movies about animated animals and whatever. Yeah. So, personally, I think this is much better than Rango. Oh, I agree. Like, Having I seen know them both now. I, I I I know a lot of people who like Rango a lot. I'm mm. sort of meh. I didn't really get into it as much. But Rio, I actually thought was quite charming you know the story mm -hmm. of a blue macaw that is um transported away from its home in uh the rainforest in brazil I believe. yeah yeah uh comes back to mate because it's the last of its species yeah it's like becomes totally domesticated in like ohio or yeah, somewhere doesn't even realize minnesota i believe yeah minnesota um, you're right you're right Good and doesn't even realize you know it's history until it comes here mm -hmm. it gets loose it during up, carnival during Carnival. So which, perfect well, opportunity to just showcase Brazil. Yeah, which, I mean, is one of the things that, you know, I and usually... Rio de Janeiro, hence yeah. the title. Uh, but um, bum, uh, I usually do not get on board with musical-type mm. films, but this one, I really do feel like it complemented mm -hmm. the idea of Carnival yeah. in terms of, you know, the release. I don't remember that... Oh, no, that's not really necessarily musical, the movie itself. There right? are a few musical sequences okay. where they're actually, like, singing. Okay. And, you know, it's sort of... A, close enough under the guise that it could be occurring during the action okay, yes. that it, it feels like it's borderline enough for me, but I even still appreciate it in terms of the concept of Carnival. Oh, I, 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 I'm still absolutely hooked with uh, Will I Am's random bird yep, character. Yep. He is so They're very funny, very funny. As a, oh, God. Yeah, you know, it's, and it's got an amazing cast that mm -hmm. you, you don't even realize. I mean, Leslie Mann is mm -hmm. the voice of Linda, who's the owner of yes, the, the of Blue Macaw, yeah. uh, which is Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. You got his sort of Paramore, mm -hmm. if you yeah, will, blue Jewel, McCall. played by Anne Hathaway. Yep. You got uh, Will I Am, Jamie Fox, another one That's of the right, singing yes. voices. <laughs> Him and Will I Am sort of partner together. <laughs> They're so good. A lot of great, a lot of great, a um, <laughs> lot of great actors, and they very vibrant, much like Carnival, mm -hmm. which I think is perfect. Um, has um, Jermaine from Flight of the Concords. What's his name? Has uh, Clement. Uh, Yes, uh, yeah, Jermaine Clement as the bad guy, yes. the cockatiel. Yeah, which which is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's a fun film. I really mm -hmm. I really do appreciate, it and I wish more people would be familiar with mm -hmm. it. I mean, despite it making five hundred million dollars, there's still <laughs> yeah. a lot of people who don't it, even know. It about totally it. fits in that like Disney, you know, Pixar DreamWorks, you know, the, what you think of the like big animated kid movie. It fits all. It hits all those buttons. It's entertaining for adults. Has good things for kids. It's colorful. It's, it's beautiful pretty. visually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, so really colorful. <laughs> But, you know, got uh, Rio 2 coming out, I believe, oh, really? next year hmm. from Carlos Saldana again. You know, dude dude is like a hit-making machine. Mm -hmm. Quickly want to note, these are kind of grosses that are coming out of Blue Sky Studios for Fox. Okay. Um, Ice Age, like almost 400 million. Robots, a little over 250. Ice Age Meltdown, 650 million. Ooh. Horton Hears a Who, almost 300. Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs, almost $900 million. Jeebus. And Rio, Louise. almost 500. So, Good Lord. They're doing pretty well. Which brings us to now, this Friday, the 13th, mm -hmm. we have the release of Ice Age Continental Drift, which. If it could make more than nine hundred million dollars, that's pretty friggin' ridiculously yeah, impressive. If it can make close to nine hundred million dollars, it'll be con yes. pretty impressive. Yes. Anyway, this takes our heroes Manny, Sid, and Diego mm -hmm. on an adventure on the iceberg as a ship, and they encounter creatures, sea creatures, and battle pirates as they explore the new nice. world. Sounds kind of interesting. I'm Turned curious. Into a another road movie. I'm kind of curious to see what exactly it means to say pirates like mm. what exactly are pirates in the ice age but Pro to be honest they're probably something like let's see what would be pi a pirate like a killer whale yeah you know Pro maybe probably, probably things like killer probably. whales that yeah, travel in packs and take from you that's or good... otters just because otters yeah. are kind of dicks yeah seals you know something yeah, like yeah, that yeah yeah uh, I, I I mean, I think it's really interesting. They add a, a whole bunch of interesting cast to this film. I mean, Aziz Ansari, Nick Frost, J-Lo, Sean William Scott, um, Patrick Stewart, you know. Wow. There are a lot of great voice mm -hmm. actors in the series that it's just, yeah. it really, it's a really nice series. I, I'm definitely curious to check it out. I hope mm -hmm. it does well. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine, unless it completely bombs, it'll be the, yeah. the last one. Presumably, it'll be... You know, 3D. And you know, the last one. And, and now, nowadays, honestly, it's like even the same thing with the third Madagascar movie. If you just make another one, even if it's bad, it's gonna at least make its unfortunately make its money back for right. the kid audience. Well, it's also, I mean, it's also 3D now, so you got yeah. kids and 3D. So those two things together are very conducive to big money. Money making. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm I'm curious to check it out. I mean, 
There's not a lot of great things coming out in July this year. This is probably one of the more interesting ones. I think this is the only major release coming out on the 13th. I think everything yeah, else that much. I found is limited. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much, yeah. Which is just so. or It's because well, everybody... The Continental Drift is starting to make room for Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like... If there's anything that's going to be counter-programming to the Dark Knight Rises, this is probably as close as you can get. Yeah, the carryover I mean, from this, yeah. I mean, it's it's a kid film. You're that's not going to see yeah. kids at Dark Knight Animated, Rises. Yeah. It's sort of like a more lovey and story. if you do, I will throw that baby out. Don't you dare bring that If it's on my screening, yeah, I'll be upset. I'm saying. Don't I saw, dare bring that kid to him. <laughs> I saw a kid at Savages. I thought that was sketchy what? enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Come dude on, get, parents. Dude getting shivved in the neck. Like, not six-year-old friendly, let me just say. But let us know your thoughts at, about Ice Age and mm -hmm. all of Fox Animated Studios' works mm -hmm. at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Um, join us next week for our DVD rundown mm -hmm. for the week of July 17th. Mm -hmm. It should be a good one. And, you know, let us know your thoughts at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Phone number? 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, Miro, Roku, Blip. Check get, in. Get blue. High five. We'll see you next time. Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Rathacon can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on f